Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the second video on the cystic fibrosis uh, in the first video uh, I told you that what is cystic fibrosis and uh, uh, what kind of mutations in the uh, CFTR gene that are responsible for causing the cystic fibrosis and how the mutation in the CFTR gene is responsible for trapping of the chloride ions in the cell and when the chloride ion they are trapped in the cell how it is responsible for causing a thicky mucus in different organs of the body particularly in the lungs so i'll share the link in the description so you can have a detailed uh, uh, understanding of that uh, from that particular video uh, in this particular part uh, i want to focus on the genetics and the inheritance pattern of the cystic fibrosis now the cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder so the first thing you need to understand what this autosomal recessive mean the autosomal mean that the gene is present on the autosomal chromosome and in this particular case it is present on the uh, chromosome number seven so the gene that is responsible for the cystic fibrosis that is present on the chromosome number seven or more particularly the mutation in the gene uh, which is responsible for causing the uh, in, uh, for causing the cystic fibrosis that is present on the chromosome number seven recessive mean that both copies of the gene they are mutated and they are needed to cause the disease in an affected person so when you talk about the human being we are getting one copy of the gene from our mother uh, one copy from our father so in case of the uh, recessive genetic disorder both of these copies the one coming from the mother the one coming from the father both of them they should be in the mutated form and when both of them they are in the mutated form then that is responsible for causing disease in an affected person so the cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder now when we talk about the uh, cystic fibrosis a person who carries one copy of the mutated gene and the other copy of the gene that is normal so usually these persons they are called is the carriers for the cystic fibrosis or sometimes they are also known as that they have the cystic fibrosis trait so they are not going to show the symptoms of the cystic fibrosis but they are uh, the carriers for the cystic fibrosis and they have the potential to transfer the disease to the next generation now the gene that is responsible or uh, the gene uh, for the uh, cystic fibrosis uh, is about uh, 230,000 base pair long and it makes a protein that is 1480 amino acid long. What happens in the uh, cystic fibrosis is that there is a mutation in the CFTR gene which is actually the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator which is an ion channel i have a detailed discussion on that in the first part of the video and i'll share the link in the description but briefly uh, in the cystic fibrosis there is a mutation there is a deletion mutation in the cftr gene and in that particular deletion the phenyl anilin which is present normally at position number 508 in the mutated case this phenyl alanine that is deleted so there is no phenyl alanine now and the length of the protein that will be 1479 amino acid long and because of the deletion of the phenyl alanine the different symptoms of the uh, cystic fibrosis they arises then now what happens is that because of this particular mutation uh, the uh, protein the cftr protein that is made that is degraded by ubiquitin tagging uh, and when they are degraded it means that there will be a lack of the cftr protein on the epithelial surfaces and in this in turn means that it can't pump chloride ions out if you can see over here the normal cftr protein is responsible for pumping the uh, chloride ions from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell causing the uh, mucus to be in the thin form but if the uh, cftr protein that is degraded or if that is not functioning properly the chloride ion they cannot move from the inside to the outside of the cell so the mucus on these epithelial surfaces that is going to become thick and this thick mucus is responsible for the symptoms of the cystic fibrosis so what happens is that if you cannot pump the chloride ions out of the cell 
this means water doesn't get drawn and the secretion they are left overly thick because in normal mucus there is 97% water and 3% solids including these kind of the uh, materials but in case of the cystic fibrosis is there is uh, you can see a deficiency of the chloride ions on the surface so they are not able to uh, draw the water towards itself making the mucus thick now let us talk about some of the uh, inheritance pattern scenarios of the cystic fibrosis uh, i'll be uh, representing the uh, normal allele by a capital c and the uh, diseased allele uh, by uh, a small c uh, so if the genotype of the mother the mother is homozygous and it is carrying both copies in the normal form the father is also homozygous that means that both of the copies they are normal so the first thing you do when you go for crosses that you are going to make the gametes so when you talk about the gametes of the mother these alleles they are going to get separated from each other following the law of segregation uh, you may have studied that the Mendel law of segregation that during the gamete formation the uh, members of a pair they get segregated from each other and but a uh, single member can only enter into one gamete so this is one gamete so it will be getting this capital c for example this is another gamete they will be getting this capital c so the mother is homozygous similarly the father is also homozygous so the gametes that are formed all of them they will be having the normal copy of the uh, a normal allele of the particular gene so all of the offsprings they will be in the normal condition on this particular side i'll be showing you the gametes of the mother and on this particular side i'll be showing you the gametes of the father so if both of the parents they are normal of course all of the uh, offsprings they will be normal now if there is another scenario scenario number two for example if the mother genotype is heterozygous that means she is a carrier for the cystic fibrosis so she will be carrying one normal copy and one mutated copy so when you make the gametes of the mother 50 percent of the gametes they will be carrying the normal allele 50 percent of the gametes they will be carrying the mutated allele if the father is homozygous uh, he is carrying both the normal copies that mean all of the gametes they will be carrying the uh, normal uh, allele so if you talk about the gametes of the mother one will be capital c the other one that will be small c as you can see over here uh, both the uh, gametes of the father all of the gametes of the father they will be carrying the normal copy over here so when you cross them this one is uh, normal because both of the copies uh, they are the of the normal gene this one is also normal so 50 percent of the offsprings they will be very much normal but uh, as you can see over here these 50 percent they are carrying actually uh, a mutated copy uh, in this particular pair one copy uh, is mutated so 50 percent of the offspring they will be the carrier just like their mother but they will not be showing any kind of the symptoms now in the third scenario say for example if both of the parents they are heterozygous uh, by that i mean both of them they are the carriers as you can see over here the mother is carrying one normal copy one mutated copy father is carrying one normal copy and one mutated copy so when you make the gametes 50 percent of the mother gametes they will be carrying the normal allele normal copy uh, the 50 percent of the uh, gametes they will be carrying the mutated copy same will be the case with the father so in this particular case as you can see not the mother not the father they are not showing any symptoms of the uh, cystic fibrosis uh, but when you look at the offsprings uh, and you cross them these are the gametes of the mother these are the gametes of the father this particular offspring uh, he or she will be normal because both the copies they are normal and this particular offspring will be a carrier because it is carrying one mutated copy this one will also be a carrier because it is carrying one mutated copy but this particular offspring uh, he or she will be affected because both of the copies of the uh, genes they are mutated so in this particular scenario 25% uh, they will be normal 50% of them they will be carrier and 25% of them that will be affected so uh, this is uh, you can say not a uh, shocking uh, thing uh, most of the time it's a shocking thing for the parents that both of them they are normal and they are having an offspring in the uh, disease form so this can be one of the possible scenario uh, why the 25% uh, of the individual or the offsprings they are diseased when you talk about the uh, fourth scenario uh, say for example if both of the uh, parents they are the disease so there is no need for discussion because if both of them they are the patients all of the offsprings they will be uh, affected 
Uh, if you talk about the uh, fifth scenario, for example, if the mother, uh, she is uh, diseased, uh, she is uh, carrying both the copies in the mutated form, but the father is homozygous. So in this particular case, uh, if you can see over here, all of the gametes of the mother, they will be carrying the uh, mutated allele, mutated copy of the gene, but the uh, gametes of the father, all of the gametes, they will be normal. So when you cross them, these are the gametes of the mother, the gametes of the father. So if you cross them, all of the offsprings, they will be the carrier for this disease because they are getting a one normal copy from their father. So this is, you can say, um, a very interesting scenario that the mother is a uh, patient of the cystic fibrosis, but all of the offsprings, they are not the patient, but they are the carrier because the father is giving them uh, a normal copy of the uh, CFTR gene. If talk about the scenario number six, if the mother genotype, if she is a patient of the cystic fibrosis, mean both the copies, they are mutated and the father is heterozygous. And that means the father is the carrier for the cystic fibrosis. So all of the gametes of the mother, they will be carrying the mutated copy. Talk about the father, 50% of them will be normal and 50% of them, they will be affected. So uh, when you cross them, these are the gametes of the mother. These are the gametes of the father. So what you can expect is that the father is uh, having 50% of the gametes of the father. They are carrying a normal copy. So 50% of the uh, offsprings, they will be the carrier. As you can see, a capital C and a small c, a capital C and a small c. So 50% of the offspring, they will be the carrier for the cystic fibrosis. But 50% of the uh, offsprings, they will be uh, affected. So these are some of the uh, scenarios of the uh, cystic fibrosis. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the like button and share it with your friends. And in the next part of the uh, in, in the next part of this uh, series of the lecture, I'll be focusing on the diagnosis, the uh, symptoms and the uh, treatment options for the uh, cystic fibrosis.